The declaration we make to the world today defines and amplifies the African position on the way forward in climate action and the fundamentals that the international community must attend to in order to ensure that humanity's economic and ecological imperatives are effectively, coherently, and sustainably achieved. Going forward, we shall use every available opportunity in the busy multilateral calendar from the G20 meeting, the United Nations General Assembly in a fortnight, the annual meetings of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund soon thereafter, as well as the COP28 to further prosecute our agenda. After our declaration, let us go home satisfied with a job very well done, proud of our progress we have made, and eager to embark on the next phase of our transformation everywhere on our continent. I know we've come from different corners of this continent. Please go home with your head very high. You have done very well. Congratulations. May God bless you. May God bless our great continent. And may God bless humanity. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Maybe as a result of our collective action, there can no longer be any doubt in any part of the world that Africa, humankind's cradle, is also its destiny. Our potential, made up of incomparable, young, resilient, and motivated human capital, natural resource wealth, and green energy potential is going to define the future of global opportunity for unprecedented prosperity and a new paradigm of industrialization that respects the environment and supports our planet's capacity to sustain biodiversity. We have successfully demonstrated that African solutions are not just appropriate for Africa's problems. They are necessary for global well-being. Our Agenda 2063 is an agenda for the benefit of all humankind. And the Africa we want aligns with the planet we need. The cradle of humankind is also its destiny, and Africa is the future, I dare say, of the world. Permit me, Excellencies, to express how profound and proud I am of the quality and scale of what we have been able to accomplish in this inaugural Africa Climate Summit. The boldness, vision, diversity, and thoroughness of the contributions made here in terms of debate, exhibitions, collaborations, and other activities have been deeply encouraging and also inspiring. During this Action Focus Summit, various stakeholders, including governments, the private sector, multilateral banks, and philanthropists, have made substantial commitments totaling a remarkable US dollars, 23 billion for green growth, mitigation, and adaptation efforts across Africa. Let us give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Notable highlights include a transformative partnership investing US dollars 60 million over two years in expanding grid access in rural Burundi. A US dollars 4.5 billion commitment from the UAE, represented here by my brother, to boost renewable energy. Substantial contribution from the European nations 
and significant investments from the private sector entities like Mazda, PowerGen, Leapfrog, Gross Boundary, and Husk Power, emphasizing renewable energy initiatives. The signing of Kenya's green hydrogen strategy with the European Union is expected to drive and accelerate green manufacturing and create thousands of new high value jobs in addition to attracting large private sector investments. Additionally, there has been a notable increase in adaptation financing, reflecting a deep commitment to Africa's sustainable future and energy systems aligning with the ambitious Nairobi Declaration. Our youth have not been left behind in the robust conversation that has taken place at this summit. They have provided us with excellent models on how we must approach our date with an African future. By being open to possibility, bold in imagination, and willing to embrace radical and radically transformative technologies, ready to question the things we take for granted and explore new alternatives, and most of all, always seeking opportunities to collaborate locally as well as globally to achieve positive change. Our youths stand out in this summit, and congratulations to them. We have come to the end of three days of intense discussions and exchange of views on African priorities as regards climate change. Everything has been considered, the narrative, the context, the challenge, that uh, climate change uh, has thrown to us uh, and the strengthening of African leadership and also sustainable environment development, international responsibility and their responsibility to Africa and, and others. The Nairobi Declaration has been adopted uh, unanimously and by acclamation. Our summit has been a great success, and I particularly want to thank uh, President William Ruto, his government, and the people of Kenya, and also want to express my gratitude to the member states, to the leaders of the African Union who at all levels have made tremendous efforts uh, our international partners have been also with us, and I want also to sincerely thank them. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a central issue has to be un underscored. The implementation of our decision to decide is good, but the implementation is better. The United Nations will soon convene an international conference on uh, the same theme, and COP28 uh, will be organized in the United Arab Emirates very soon. Africa, with the Nairobi spirit, uh, should in no way lose these two opportunities in order to push forward its own uh, agenda for more climate justice, for more concrete uh, action and honoring of commitments uh, and also for the need for adaptation and transition. These two events uh, that have been mentioned, but before that we need to galvanize and uh, muster all our efforts and bring in these dynamics. The African Union will work out a roadmap uh, for this declaration and will propose uh, to the member states uh, uh, to make climate change the theme of 2025-2026. Similarly, a proposal is made to the member states so that the African uh, climate change be institutionalized and be held every two years. So let us uh, uh, fix uh, our uh, idea on the next uh, summit in two years' time. I thank you for your kind attention. We call for increased support 
and the solidarity from international community, especially the developed countries, to provide adequate, predictable and accessible financing, technology transfer, and the capacity building for Africa adaptation effort in line with the Paris Agreement goal of mobilizing US dollars 100 billion annually by 2020. Our number three call, Your Excellencies, is prioritizing the rapid of operationalization of the Santiago Network on loss and damage as means to catalyze technical assistance to developing countries that are vulnerable. And Your Excellency, our number, number four, we stress the need to more than triple adaptation finance for Africa, largely in form of grants as current levels are insufficient to meet the estimated adaptation costs in developing countries in Africa. Number five, Your Excellency, we request for support to finalize the implementation of the global goal of adaptation under the Paris Agreement, which aims to enhance adaptive capacity, strengthen resilience, and reduce vulnerability to climate change in a measurable, reportable, and a viable manner. And our number six, Your Excellency, as legislators from Africa, we appeal for enhanced cooperation and coordination among Africa countries and the region to share best practices, mobilizing climate funds to scale advance across border programs. And our number seven as legislators from Africa, Your Excellency, we are committed as legislators to effective execute our legislative roles, oversight and the budgetary mandate to ensure that Africa as the right legal and the policy frameworks and the needed resources to aid climate change in response in interventions in Africa. And our number 10 as legislators, Your Excellency, we are calling upon Africa Union member states to ensure that members of parliament are part of the national delegation in various national areas. And lastly, Your Excellency, we applaud you as the President of Kenya for having this Africa's Climate uh, Summit, for also having time and coming to launch our Africa meeting, which we had with the legislators in South Africa. And Your Excellency, thank you so much as legislators. We appreciate for getting this platform where we get position to share our ideas, our challenges, and the best practices. And lastly, Your Excellency, it is also good in this forum I say that Kenya is the first country in Africa continent to have our Climate Change Act 2016. And lastly, Your Excellency, we have also managed to do the new amendment bill 2023 in inclusion of the carbon credit and the treaty. Thank you, Your Excellency. With the African indigenous people gathered for the African Climate Summit pre-summit forum from the 1st to 3rd of September 2023 here in Nairobi, Kenya. Hereby, we call on African states, governments, bilateral institutions and other actors to create a focal point and liaison offices at the, and liaison offices at the African Union headquarters of Africa for indigenous peoples. We call, to, we call on them to ensure effective and meaningful participation of African indigenous peoples in all development agendas and high level decision making processes such as the African Climate Summit. We call for, further, for stop to further displacement or forceful evictions of indigenous peoples from their territories. We call, to, we call on you to affirm effective safeguards and security of land tenure and natural resources to guarantee bare minimum application of free prior informed consent, principles on any investments or projects on indigenous people's lands and territories as enshrined in the United Declaration of Indigenous People's Rights. We call for the recognition and strengthening of traditional knowledge systems that promote adaptation and resilience through policy frameworks and programs. We call for partnerships that integrate traditional knowledge with conventional scientific knowledge systems and practices. We call that you ensure ease of mobility of Africa, indigenous peoples scattered across nation states through policy interventions and mutually negotiated transhumance protocols to help promote climate resilience. 
We also call that you develop clear guidelines and policy frameworks to cushion indigenous peoples from potential exploitation of dishonest um, investors, especially on carbon trading. We call that you accelerate meaningful and impactful sustainable development projects and benefit sharing. Establish indigenous peoples climate resilience fund to accelerate the realization of sustainable development goals and to mitigate against the impact of climate change on indigenous peoples, in particularly women, children, youths, and persons with disability. In conclusion, we reiterate that although we, the indigenous peoples, contribute the least to global emissions that lead to climate change, we suffer the most from its consequences. We are here with a solution and um, experiential lessons from Mama Africa. There can be nothing for us without us. Thank you so much. Mr. President, if you would like, I would like to present. The That's wonderful. Thank you so much for that extremely important response.